Folks, we're about to delve deeper into aftermarket suspension upgrades than has ever been done before. Look, if you own a dual cab ute and are looking at doing a suspension upgrade, don't go anywhere because we're about to answer every question you've ever had and some you'd never even thought of. We're here at Fulcrum to show you why you should upgrade your suspension and exactly how to do it properly. So sit down, sit back and enjoy. Plan for the weights you're carrying. Common question we get asked all the time is why are we still bothering with leaf springs in these modern dual cab utes? Well, it's pretty simple to answer. You see, leaf springs are extremely good at carrying a wide range of loads. Let's say you're a tradesman and during the week, you've got bags of cement near all your tools and all your mates, but then on the weekend, you chuck all of that out, just put the fridge in and hit the tracks. Your leaf springs are able to carry that confidently across those two different weight ranges. Whereas coil springs, you see, cannot do that anywhere near as effectively. Now, talking about talking effectively, I'm going to hand you over to an expert in the suspension industry, Shane from Fulcrum, and he's going to run you through a correctly weighted, underweighted and overweighted spring pattern for your four-wheel drive. Over to you, Shane. -o. So what we got here is a correctly loaded leaf spring. Okay, as you look at the shape of the leaf spring, we've got a nice smile, we've got a nice little arc through it, and it's actually sitting off the secondaries about halfway along there and if you have a look at the rear shackle it's sitting on a nice angle there and as we bounce it you can see it actually pivoting and actually absorbing some of that bounce so now we've got an oversprung vehicle what I mean by oversprung is there's not enough weight on this vehicle to actually make these leaf springs sit correctly if you have a look here we've got all this air gap between each one of the springs so I've got a piece of paper through here so you can you can see there Okay, so how a leaf spring works is the more weight you put on it, the more leaves it engages. So right now, this has only got about two or three leaves that are actually touching and engage. So when you go, and if you have a look at the shackle, sorry, the shackle is actually on an almost vertical angle. So what's gonna happen when you go over a bump, it's not actually gonna pivot this shackle properly or move the actual leaf spring pack. So it's gonna shove all that weight straight back through the chassis and it's gonna destroy your leaf spring bushes and you're gonna feel every single bump. Here is what an overloaded leaf spring looks like. See how the spring is sitting flat with no curve in it? The secondary leaf is touching the rest and the leaves are actually bending backwards like a frown shape when they hit the bumps and that's a problem. Because the leaves are completely flat, the rear shackle is angled as far back as it can go and isn't doing its job. It's not moving. Look how close the bump stop is to the chassis. Even a small bump will cause it to bottom out, which can do a lot of damage or even bend the chassis. With this correctly rated spring, see how well the shackle pivots because there is a gentle smile shape in the leaf pack. As weight is added to the spring, it flattens out which moves the shackle back. You can also see a much bigger distance between the bump stop and the chassis. So it's really important that you match your leaf springs to your load so you work that out before you get your vehicle lifted and then you can have the comfort when you're driving down the road. Thanks Shane. So folks, you can see the importance of not only getting the right suspension, but getting it fitted by an industry expert. Now, it's really worth bearing in mind that there are several different leaf packs depending on the type of vehicle you've got and the amount of weight you're going to be carrying. So, you figure out just how much weight is going to be on your vehicle before you get your suspension fitted. quickly demonstrate why poly bushes like this one right here wear so much better than original. As you can see with original, when I move the arm, the bush itself has to move. Now think of Cape York, you're driving all the way up there. How many times is that going to do that and how long is that original bush going to last? Now, let me show you how a poly bush works. Okay folks, what I've got right here is a poly bush. Now as you can see, I can demonstrate this so very easily. It acts like a bearing. Grease between the pin and the bush itself allows it to move without any flex whatsoever to the bush. That means that bush naturally is going to last a heck of a lot longer. Look how much flex and articulation you get from the Super Pro bushes. They allow just as much, if not more, than the standard rubber ones. How good is that? Well, if that's not enough proof for you folks that these Super Pro bushes will never wear out, the boys are so confident they offer a lifetime warranty. You can check them out. Watch how hot your standard shock absorbers get compared to a quality aftermarket shock like this formula. Heat is the biggest killer of shock absorbers. You can see here the formula shocks were over 26 degrees cooler than the standard ones, which makes them last a lot longer. If you're gonna lift your four wheel drive, it stands to reason you'll need to change your OEM suspension because they're simply not long enough. But of course, I'll also be on corrugations and the hardest four wheel driving tracks every week. But I'll also be on the road for thousands of Ks touring with a lot of weight. I need suspension like this that can handle the heat, 
moving up and down at great speeds for hours on end. That's capable off-road and comfy on the road. The complications of lifting your four-wheel drive and how to fix it. Righto folks, I'm just going to simulate a suspension lift on a four-wheel drive here and show you just how much that camber can be thrown out. What is camber? Camber is the top of the wheel, in or out. Have a look at that. You can really see how much that camber does get thrown out across the range of all IFS vehicles. Now that camber has to be corrected and I'm going to show you how. Fortunately for us though, there's an easy fix. Adjustable front control arms. Folks, I want to further illustrate that point by using the front end of a 2010 model Hilux right here. And I'm using this jack handle to simulate the tyre. I want you to keep your eye on the top of the tyre so that you can see just how that camber is affected when it moves up and down. That really does illustrate just how much a suspension lift will have an impact on the camber of your tyres and why it needs to be fixed. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. And this right here, folks, is the solution. Super Pro adjustable upper control arm. You can easily adjust the camber and caster back to where it should be by adjusting this ball joint. Look how much bigger and stronger this ball joint is on the Super Pro adjustable arm too. And as an added bonus folks, of course you get polyurethane bushes as well, which as you all know, much stronger and a far greater wear life. If you're lifting your ute, you really should fit adjustable upper control arms to get your wheel alignment back to where it should be. Wheel alignment. Righto folks, you've got your suspension dialed and of course you've had a wheel alignment done at the same time. However, you might be shocked to know just how far out of alignment your truck can go after just one weekend on the tracks. And I'm about to demonstrate that using my D-Max from last weekend's filming. Even after one tough weekend of four-wheel driving, your alignment could be completely out, causing your four-wheel drive to steer incorrectly and wear your tyres unevenly. Righto folks, so as you can see from the graph here, my camera is out ever so slightly. Toe is the front of the wheel, in or out, and again, I am slightly out. That of course leads us to caster. Why is that important? Well, pretty darn important when it comes to stability. When you're doing 100 kilometres on a road, you want to be as stable as possible. So caster, vitally important. Now look, what's really vitally important for you to understand is that each one of these affects the other. If one is out, it'll have an adverse effect on everything else. That'll be stability, that'll be cornering, that'll be handling, and of course, right down to tyre wear. So folks, it is vitally important after any trip away, be it a big or a short hardcore weekend, or a Cape York trip, get your tyres aligned as often as possible. Here's the reason why you need a sway bar for your dual cab ute. Whether you're a tradie and you carry a lot of tools, or you're heading remote so you might be fully loaded plus a few hundred kilos on the roof or up high, your ute is going to roll more when you're cornering. Whoa. <laughs> Most dual cab utes don't have a sway bar, but when you're loaded and cornering, they make a hell of a difference. So we fitted a Fulcrum adjustable rear sway bar to show the huge difference it makes. Look how much less body roll there is here. This makes a huge improvement when you load your ute up on bitumen or gravel roads. We sincerely hope you got a heck of a lot out of our suspension guide, but we understand you might still have questions or perhaps you're having problems with your current suspension setup and would like to ask an industry expert for help. Well, you've come to the right place. Leave your question in the comments below and we'll get Shane from Fulcrum to answer your question in the coming weeks.